uh, you have pl a plethora of paper materials there. There are many trees that have given their lives for great purposes. Okay, uh, in your bulletin uh, programs, there was a benevolent offering envelope and uh, uh, we collect that once a month for those with uh, special needs in our church. You also had the uh, hand out the card there for the City of Xenia worship event. And uh, we are just excited next Sunday morning to uh, meet at Shawnee Park and let God's praises be heard in our community. And uh, this can have two purposes, one to remind you, but also uh, if you have a friend or a neighbor that uh, Sunday mornings, they're not a part of a church family. Uh, invite them to come. Use this as an invitation. Uh, just a, a, a wonderful opportunity to do that. Also, uh, you should have a purple page. Do you guys have this purple lavender? Right? And that's our text for today. And that's because we all want to use the same uh, version or translation as we, as we work through the passage of Psalm 145. So uh, I know that some of you uh, do your Bible study and reading in ESV or NIV or NLT, uh, in the Greek and Hebrew texts, right? But uh, just for consistency's sake, because this morning, uh, I think it's going to be less preaching and more participation, but it'll be group participation. I just saw Bob Jobs and his heart over there just, just trembled big time when it was participation, but it'll be group participation, and uh, that way we can have the same text of God's Word before us. So that's that purple page. Uh, and there's some places on the, uh, the, the stapled packet where you're going to be writing some things down, and if you do not have a a pen or a pencil, a writing utensil with you. Uh, I have lots of extras that I brought with me that even say Emmanuel Baptist Church celebrating 75 years. So does Pastor Greg says he would love to uh, get you a pen. And if, if you think you have one that, that may run out of ink here soon, take another. Okay. So we're not going to be writing a lot, but uh, there's some places for you on that the white packet there to write some things down as we participate and work through Psalm 145. So, and if anyone needs extra packets, uh, there's about 10 extras here in the front row where the good seats are. Uh, does anybody need a packet? We got need some pens over this way too, but just want you all to be able to participate with Psalm 145 this morning. And you already have uh, in our opening song, Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Uh, it was a few weeks ago when we started our psalm series. Uh, we did Psalm 146, the first of the five praise songs that begin praise the Lord and praise the Lord. Hallel, Jehovah, Hallel, Yah. All right, praise the Lord. Well, today we're going to be in Psalm 145, which is right before that. And uh, this is an impossible psalm to outline because David, attributed to David as the author of this, is just overflowing with praise. And as we work through it today, you'll see there's some, there's some pieces or chunks, but there's just so many intertwining thoughts and ideas and as we work through it uh, today, uh, I think our group participation is going to help us maybe just to, to pull out some, some things that will, thanks Greg, you're doing awesome. You still got more in there. He found his calling, he said. <laughs> All right, we are, uh, we're in a piece of literature, it's poetry, uh, these songs are psalms, uh, placed to music and sung and chanted uh, and said and recited. Uh, I read one place that, that this psalm, Psalm 145, 
uh, Jewish people would, would faithfully read this every day, in the morning and in the evening, Psalm 145. Uh, it encompasses so many uh, truths. Uh, I think one of the, the, I don't know, negative parts of our culture where we're just busy and so much of our, so much of our meaning comes from being productive and making things and doing things. And if we're not busy, we sometimes feel badly about that. I think we, we need to, and I need to, uh, practice more the uh, art of art. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. Isn't it amazing how God has gifted authors to write in a way that draws you right into the story? And when's the last time you've taken time to sit down with a good book and you couldn't put it down because you were a part of it? And it does something to your imagination and your thoughts and, and, and you, can, you just are drawn into it. Uh, I think maybe in a little response to our culture, our artist friend, Bob Ross, is it? Gotten a little more love here lately? Because he puts, what, the little happy trees in. Right? And, and it just, like, why would somebody watch somebody paint? But there's something in our, in our makeup where imagination and, and emotions come together to help us to to understand something. Uh, music does that. Uh, I remember it's probably been five, six years ago. Uh, my wife and I, we went to uh, up to Troy, Hobart Arena for a Christmas concert by with Martina McBride. And it was on our birthday and it was a birthday and Christmas celebration. And I just remember the beautiful backdrop on the stage and then singing Christmas songs on gospel songs of Christ and my thoughts right there immediately went to my dad because he had passed away a few years earlier on December the 21st and was buried on Christmas Eve but my dad's favorite music was Christmas music and in that setting that artist Mitch, Mitch, uh, Martina McBride Martina McBride and the all the lights and the displays just transported you for that hour or two someplace deeper in your thoughts and in your soul, right? Uh, we, we come here and uh, one of the things that we value is our, in our worship experiment, experience here on Sunday mornings is our worship and song. And uh, I'm thankful for David Nykirk and the others on the worship team who, who lead us through music and allow us to get a little space from our pressures of the week. And I don't know if you caught it, but that song that we sang, Your Breath in Our Lungs, right? We, we give you our praise. Uh, we're not singing to the worship team and we're not saying that to each other in that moment we were if we reflect on it if we pause enough we give you God our praise All right and so so music literature uh, dance or for some of us choreography right that an expression, an artistic expression that, that takes us someplace deeper in our thinking and our, and our thoughts. And so Psalm 145, like all the Psalms, are, are, are written as songs that, that are just beautiful and colorful and, and overwhelmingly descriptive. And, and uh, Gail, in a few weeks ago when you preached, you, you, you nailed it also that there's just some beauty there of the emotions that God has created us with that we get to interact with God on an emotional, on a personal, on a relational level.
and Psalms helps us to get there. So I hope today, and my prayer today is that Psalm 145, as we look through it today, will be something that maybe there's some things you can grab onto today and use in your own study of of poetry, of, of the Psalms. Maybe there's some thoughts today that that need to become some phrases that you begin to recite throughout the week. Uh, not sure where God's going to take it, but my prayer is is that this is, gives you some some footholds into praising God. All right, if you would uh, grab that purple page that you have in front of you, and uh, let's stand together. If I may ask you to do this, please. And we're going to read through Psalm 145. And we'll do this all together. So if you would please read with me, beginning at verse 1. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall down and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you. You give them food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Thank you. You may be seated. you just join with me for prayer, God? Might your, your words that you chose to, to reveal yourself to us this morning in this passage through the, the medium of, of song. And Father, might... Uh, Might uh, these words uh, bring about life in our hearts and souls, healing, joy, peace, conviction. Father, uh, uh, teach us this morning. Uh, might our might our minds and hearts be able to focus. Thank you for your spirit who shines the light and allows us to, to grasp 
perhaps truths, Father, um, might Cause us, God, cause us, God, to hear your spirit today. In Christ's name, amen. All right. Uh, all right. You have your pens and you have your white paper there in front of you. Uh, just if you want to take a look at this letter A, praising God. And uh, here's just what I did when I was sitting and looking at this psalm, as I read through it several times, certain patterns, certain ideas came out. And I just, like, broke it down into these pieces. And that's what this document is, is just kind of different ways. And each one of these sections kind of highlights a slightly different thought. Or maybe it's better to say it looks at truth from a slightly different angle because the truth doesn't change, but we're looking at it from a different side. And so in this first section, praising God, and if you look along the left-hand side on this table, this chart, those are the verse numbers, okay? Those are the verse numbers, and as we go through, uh, we'll just kind of keep that as the pattern to, to help you to follow that. I want to draw your attention also. So that's, that's kind of how we did the study uh, the purple page. I want you guys to see this too, because in a, about a month, we're going to launch into a study of Romans, and we're going to make available to you some, some notebooks that have some places for you to actually, during the week, do some personal Bible study. And I want you just to, to note a couple of things. On the back side of the, the purple page, at the very bottom, there's a website. It says BibleGateway.com. Uh, if you've not made yourself uh, looked at this website, I would encourage you, if you are going to sit down and and study a passage of scripture, try to figure some things out. This is a great resource, and one of the one of the most basic things it provides is on a website you can. You can see and read dozens of different versions of God's Word. And uh, I happen to, to pull from there this NIV uh, version of that. But you can even open up on a window side by side by side and look at the King James, the New King James, and the ESV, and the NLT. And you can work your way across that. Uh, so I just want you to be aware that that's a wonderful resource. And uh, if you want to use the internet for something very, very good, <laughs> BibleGateway.com is a great way to start that. Uh, right above that, do you see the section called footnotes? Don't want us to miss this little piece either. Uh, and perhaps in the uh, Bible text that you have on your phone or your written text, if you brought God's word with you this morning, uh, sometimes you'll notice that there are footnotes on the bottom of the page or in the margins of your of your written text and here's three that uh, that these editors decided to include in here and I want to just make you aware of two of them so the first first footnote letter a this psalm is an acrostic poem the verses of which including verse 13b begin with successive letters of the Hebrew alphabet so there are 21 verses and there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And we need to go down to letter C footnote because this is interesting. Letter C says, verse 13, there's one manuscript, ancient writing of the Masoretic te text, Dead Sea Scrolls and Syriac. Most of the manuscripts do not have the last two lines of verse 13. So go to verse 13, which is on the front side there. And verse 13 starts out, Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. And in the acrostic, in the original Hebrew language, verse 13 is the 13th letter of the Hebrew language. But then, for whatever reason, most of the texts or the scrolls, the ancient writings, the majority of them, 
do not have the second two lines of verse 13. That's what that foot, those footnotes kind of refer to. And so the, the, the line that says, the Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Do you see that? If you want to write in there 13b, right? And in some Bibles, maybe they'll put, a, put this in brackets or in parentheses because many of the scrolls don't have this. And so when David wrote this psalm, did he leave out the letter and this, this 14th letter on purpose? Uh, or, and then it was inserted, or how does all that work? Because the, the text of Scripture that we read is based on the Hebrew writings, the scrolls, and, and the certainty of it's based on the the. the, the uh, how close those scrolls are, how old they are, right? Close to the original they are, and how many there are. Well, in this point, the publisher just wants us to know, full disclosure, that's really what it is, right? That 13b does not show up in many of the scrolls. Now, don't be alarmed by this because the truth of 13b matches the truth in God's word and it actually matches the truth in this very psalm. Okay, so, so it's not like, is the, can we trust the Bible? The publisher is helping us to know that if you go back to some of the Hebrew scrolls, the ancient ones, the second part of verse 13 is not there. 13b, we would call that. Okay, so, so that's just, and so if you go to Bible Gateway or go to your own Bible, those little letters, those little points that, that direct you to a footnote are sometimes just helpful in understanding that. So when David penned this, was, was 13b there? I don't know. Evidence suggests that it wasn't. But my mind also says if it's an acrostic with all 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, uh, what was he thinking? And was there a meaning behind it not being there? And you, you could dive into that, but we're not going to this morning any farther. All right, so letter A, praising God. Let's go back to that page. Verse 4 says, One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. There's a place on the right-hand column there, the third column, to fill that in, the second part of verse 4. And let me just give you a minute now, and this is always dangerous in a classroom, this is always dangerous to say, all right, you have a few moments to fill in the rest of this chart, but would you look at verse 5 and fill in the second half that's missing there, and just the right-hand column, would you fill in that fray or that part of the, the verse that goes there that matches, okay? Help each other if you're lost right there, but we're just filling in the third column. The first one's filled in up on the screen, your mighty acts. Okay, so then go to verse 5 and fill it in. And this is just interesting how these, this parallelism happens all the way through this passage here. Okay, so when I see you stop writing, then we will move on. How are we doing? finish verse 5, it's verse 6, and then verse 7, and then verse 11. Anybody need help? Getting it? This is kind of one way to do a Bible study, is to, to find these lists and break it down like this. Verse 7, they're both given to you. So then skip to verse 11. We now need tables and school desks, don't we, to write on? Thanks for battling all the papers and pencils and pens.
Jared, if you'd give us that next slide there for. The next slide has them all filled in for you in green, in case you didn't get those yet. And let's do this together as a congregation. Uh, will you please read the middle column in just a moment? And where they get the first one is the dot, 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 I'll insert the right-hand column. And then we'll just keep going down through. So you lead, and then I'll respond with what we filled in on the right-hand side. So if you would please, congregation, just read together. One generation commends, then pause there, and then I'll fill in. All right, would you do it, please? Here we go. One generation Your works. Your mighty acts. The glorious splendor of your majesty. Your wonderful works. The power of your awesome works. Your great deeds. Your abundant goodness. Your righteousness. The glory of your kingdom. Your might. Uh, kind of seem repetitive for a purpose though not to miss this not to miss this was it tell us about God and his greatness go right down the right hand column his works his mighty acts the glorious splendor of his majesty his wonderful works his great deeds abundant goodness righteousness the glory of your kingdom your might tells us about the God that we're directing our attention to. Uh, verse 7, maybe you caught the asterisk there. I put that there intentionally because on the back of page 4, I just defined a couple of words uh, for us, and that's something else that you can do when you study the Scripture and you come across maybe a word or something that, so what does this mean? And... Uh, very bottom of page four of where it says vocabulary is that all right school word vocabulary number four what's the goodness of god the lord's not evil the lord does not love sin and indeed he can't even be tempted with evil and i just put another website there where i found that definition and that's something you can do you're studying God's word right below it. The righteousness of God. What's a big old word? We don't use righteousness very often when we're at Kroger. Righteousness. So what is that? God is morally and ethically right. And he acts. Everything he does, right? Only in keeping with what is right and just. And I found that through the Gospel Coalition. Another good resource online. Uh... I want to draw your attention to the top of that chart before we go any farther. Verse 12, right across the top of that chart. Letter A, right there at the top of that chart. So that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Now this is the only verse in this chapter that that specifically just tells us the purpose of our praise so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom you just uh, I think a truth here that when praise to God is on our lips and overflowing from our hearts it's one of the ways that people know about God and sometimes we we sometimes want to to define witnessing or evangelism with the 
the four spiritual laws or the Romans road or or what what verse do we go to next? Well, maybe a bridge to the lost world is letting them know about the greatness of our God. And God's done great things. And then verse 4 hits it a little closer to home for me. One generation commends your works to another. How does it get passed on? And what gets passed on? Yes, the truth of Scripture gets passed on, but part of the truth, a whole chunk of the Bible, is praise and this song and this worship to God, and part of that is being passed on. And so when we sing hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord, and everyone participates and our kids participate, and we, we smile about that, but that's a part of passing it on to the next generation about God's goodness and God's greatness. And if we just pause right there this morning, we have a responsibility as followers of God, as those who know God and, and His goodness and His greatness and His power and His might, His awesome works, His righteousness has been, is being revealed to us, right? Like it's a continual process of of. of of learning and, and experiencing God, but it has been revealed to us if we ever bowed the knee and accepted him as our Lord and Savior, well, there's a message to tell of God's goodness that he forgave me. Of God's goodness that he created this world. Of God's goodness of the mighty things that he has done. Let's do another one, letter B. It just happens to fit on this page, so that's why I put it there. No, no, no secret, no order to these till we get to the last one. But letter B, I don't know if you caught it when we read through it, probably not, but as you look through this psalm, there's some, a little thread of kingdom thoughts. Starting right in verse 1. My God, the king, right? Just starts right there. And then there are some other kingdom thoughts there as you work through this. So the next slide, there it is, Jared. So this time, if you would just fill in the left-hand column and put the verse number, where do you find these kingdom thoughts? So skim through it, and would you put the verse number for each of these kingdom thoughts there in the left-hand column? Don't mean to confuse you, but now we're filling in the left-hand column with a number. So find the verse number. Blake, did you already do this? He's ahead of me. Oh, his wife's doing it. Wow, you guys are working together. That's what a young couple is supposed to be doing. You got the text and she's got the pen. It's awesome. Okay, can you find those phrases in the, the passage? Kingdom thoughts. Got a thumbs up from Don Dunstan. He said he filled it in. Well, let's check out the answer key, see how you did. Jared, you got the next slide for us? Here we go. Verse 5, verse 11, verse 12, and then two of them in verse 13. Kingdom thoughts. Just a couple of things to bring to your attention here. Uh, it's good evidence, tradition, that David wrote this psalm. King David. And uh, starts right out in verse 1. My God, the king. Anybody know what it's called when we have a king of kings? That's like God, the king of kings. Whoa, the king of kings. The king of King David, Josh. You see that one coming, right? Like 
David was right there as the king, the nation of Israel, sitting on a throne with all this power and all the majesty surrounding him. And he starts out this psalm and says, my God, the king. And then he follows up with the glorious splendor of your majesty, the glory of your kingdom. Not my kingdom, your kingdom, right? The glorious splendor of your kingdom. That your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures through all generations. There's another word, dominion. Not a Kroger word, so let's go to the back page. What do we do with dominion? Vocab number six, what's it say? Supreme authority, absolute ownership. What did David say as he wrote this? about dominion, supreme authority, absolute ownership. Your supreme authority, God, your absolute ownership endures through all generations. Way beyond me to all generations. And if I just put these two thoughts together, the one at the top, so that all people may know, you God that your dominion your absolute authority your ownership forever and ever through all generations uh, that's what God's up to in this world through this church and through his church is that all people all people would know God and know that he is their absolute authority. Right? That's what it's about. People all over this planet are bowing their knee to some authority or another. And this psalm is shouting out over and over and over again that God is matchless, incomparable. That his dominion That's who we follow. That's who we obey. That's who we worship. Because he's the king of kings. Let us see. Oh, it's a big one. I'm sorry. I hope we're warmed up. Let us see. I use verse 3 as a kind of an introduction to this great is the Lord most worthy of praise his greatness no one can fathom and then David <laughs> the songwriter tries to put into words <laughs> tries to put into words this God that no one can fathom would you work your way down through that column and uh, complete it again through verse 20 and I think you'll see that there's an Another pattern in this psalm all the way through. So, so work through that last column and, and fill those in, please. We halfway? A little over halfway?
Getting close, Jacob. Getting close. Don, getting close. Don's got a couple more. Okay. Give you another 30 seconds. I should have had you fill in the middle column. It's a little more repetitive, isn't it? <laughs> well, let's put into practice one generation commending God's greatness to the next, that right-hand column that you are filling in is just a wonderful list of things that the next generation needs to know about God and that the world needs to know about God. So uh, let's do this. I don't know. If you are... Uh, age 20 and under, you're going to lead us with the middle column. And then the rest of us will respond with the third column. Okay, so where are my 20 and under? I got kids in here. You guys can do this. Good. So 20 and under, you're going to have to speak up, but we're going to speak loudly because we're going to tell you some of these wonderful things about God. You ready? So middle column people, I'll get you going on the first one, and then you've got to just follow it. So 20 and unders, I need to hear you. Here we go. 20 and unders. The Lord is, okay, 20 and unders. The Lord is compassionate, slow to anger, rich in love. Good to all. Compassion on all he has made. Trustworthy in all he promises. Faithful in all he does. All who fall. All who are bowed down. Them their food at the proper time. His hand, the desires of every living thing, righteous in all his ways, faithful in all he does, here to all who call on him in truth, the desires of those who fear him, their cry and saves them. All who love him, all the wicked. There's your list. Where does it go? Those are the words that people need to hear from us about our God, who he is, what he has done. And I don't know if there's one or two in that list that you personally right now would highlight and say, boy, there's one I can't forget. There's one that needs to be closer in my thinking this week. Maybe it's the one near the bottom. The Lord is near to all who call on him in truth. The in truth idea there means without guile. There's, they're calling on him sincerely, authentically, not, not trying to manipulate God in any way. But he's near to all. Maybe it's the Lord is compassionate at the top. God is good to all. That's the answer for you to give to a friend, a neighbor, a child who's trying to figure out why is, why is this not so pleasant thing happening? Well, what's true is God is good to all. He has compassion in all he's made. 
Uh, the one that, verse 15, came to my mind a couple weeks ago. Uh, the Lord gives them their food at the proper time. Uh, this has been a, a summer of a battle going on in my backyard. Man versus squirrels. Uh, squirrels have, 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 are in a lead. <laughs> But uh, there was the day I came, came in late, and uh, Drew asked me, so uh, what you been doing? And I said, I, I'm, I'm battling the squirrels, trying to keep them out of my corn. And Drew, being the Bible scholar, godly young man, he said, well, that's the way that God provides for the squirrels. <laughs> and so what did I do that night? And I think my heart was sincere. I prayed for the first time in my life, God, please provide for the hawks. <laughs> but God provides. God provides food. Uh, the truth there. Maybe these words need to go on some cards and put around your house, put on the walls. You don't have to, like, go online and, I mean, you can go online and order a nice picture or a painting with one of these, but you can just make it. Jared and Hillary have a couple chalkboards in their house where they write down things that are true, update it periodically, all right? But Keep these words in front of you. All of these were in Psalm 145. The Lord is, the Lord is, the Lord is, the Lord watches over, the Lord gives. Like over and over and over and over again. All right, let's do letter D. It's our last long one. We're getting close to the end. We really are. This was an interesting one as I was reading through the passage. Like David can't use enough of these words all, always, ever, over and over and over and over again. And I think in the last four or five verses, it's like 10 times. But there's a whole bunch of these in this psalm. So would you just go through, please, and, and work through that last column. The first one's there is given in verse 2. I will praise you every day. I will extol your name forever and ever. And this time you guys, yep, work through that. It'll be repetitive with the alls and the evers, but I think there's some truth here that we want to get in our hearts too. So this is the last long one this morning, letter D, the alls and the evers. All right, pencils down, pens down just for a moment. Interruption, interruption, interruption. Some of you just panicked there. Uh, you know how you find these kind of things? How I find them? I print off the passage that I'm looking at and reading and studying. And I just start marking stuff. And the first step in this process would have been, oh man, all, all, all. And just start circling it, underlining it, highlighting it. Right? And then the, the, the chart here, the table that I inserted here, is just kind of a way of displaying it. But that's how you find that kind of stuff, right? You want to look and see what's God communicating here. It's a lot of alls and evers. All right, keep going. I'll let you go. I won't interrupt again. Let your hearts rest for a moment. Your minds work hard.
in church, Don? Uh, we have communion in a few minutes. <laughs> People watching online are struggling today with these long bouts of silence unless they have the copy of notes from Barb's email. There you go, Barb. Thank you. Okay, are we close? Maybe? It's a lot of alls. A lot of evers. Go ahead, Jared, if we can bring those up. You can read them off the, the slide if you can see them or off your own paper. But I will read the middle column. And would you as a church respond with the third column? Okay, so I will read the middle column. You respond with the third column. I will praise your name. I will praise you. I will extol your name. The Lord is good. The Lord has compassion on. The Lord receives praise from. The Lord's mighty acts will be known. The Lord's kingdom is. The Lord's dominion endures. The Lord is trustworthy. The Lord is faithful. The Lord upholds. The Lord lifts up. The Lord gives food at the proper time to all. Thank you. Let's keep going. The Lord opens his hand and satisfies the desires. The Lord is righteous. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is near. The Lord watches over. The Lord will destroy. His holy name will be praised. His holy name will be praised. How many? How much? When? There are some answers to those questions. And it seems to be all the nevers. And forever. Like, like, he can't get enough of that in this psalm. The alls and the evers. All right. Really our last one of letter E. I guess we have two, but letter E is our last one where I'm going to ask you to, to complete this. But here is the Kind of the, the setting, the context of this song is to give to God never-ending praise. And if you would fill in the left-hand column there, there's just three verses for you to fill in in those three white spaces. And this is the setting, the kind of the context, the back of, backdrop of this psalm. If you would just fill in the left-hand column, those three verses. Where do you find those truths? One in the beginning, one in the middle, one in the end, if you want some hints. So it's verses 2, 10, and 21. Verses 2, 10, 
and 21. Did you find those there? So it starts out this psalm, verses 1 and 2, and closes verse 21. And in the middle, it they, they kind of drops back to this idea of it. Let me just read through this chart with you. Let me read it, please. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. I will extol your name forever and ever. All your works includes us. Praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. I wrote next to this chart the word obey. That's, that's what I just hear. It's obedience. I will. I will. Your faithful people extol you. Uh, that's what our days and our weeks, our lives should be filled with. Uh, there's a lot of things that come to our mind of of things that are fun and things that are exciting and we'll probably in our lifetime never have a season like the Bengals had last year. Bills were close. <laughs> but we get wrapped up and excited and we talk about that stuff. And this psalm this morning is to just get our attention and our focus on someone bigger and on a kingdom purpose that's, that's eternal, that, that God is doing, that he would be known among all people. And we get to just tell of his goodness, his greatness, his glory, his graciousness to the people around us. Anybody hear from your lips? Oh, God, you're so good. Oh, God, you're so kind. The words there that I put the little star by exalt and praise and extol, I put them in your vocabulary list, but exalt. To hold someone or something in very high regard, to elevate by praise. Praise to publicly offer grateful honor or respect in words or song. Extol to praise enthusiastically. That's what should mark our lives. Letter F. I'm just going to, there's nothing for you to fill in. Shush. Work's over. There's something else that happens in this psalm and it goes back and forth. Part of the psalm is David talking to God, like the song that we sang earlier in this service. And some of the psalm, the song is David talking to others about God. And uh, they're just broken out there for you. And if you were going to take this and highlight it or you wanted to do another exercise, you could read through just the ones talking to God. And you know what that exercise is? It's maybe looking up as you read it. And talking to God. And what would you do with the talking to others? Maybe that's what you would do around your table with your family. Take those verses. And say, let me tell you about God. <laughs> right? Because praise, worship is, yes, directed to God. But in this psalm, we're to encourage one another with our praise to God also.